This video is about adding puddles and weathering effects based on height data and vertex color. So let's do it. You can download the project file for this video on my Patreon. The link is in the description. I'm gonna add the puddles on top of the material we created in the previous video. I recommend you watch that too. And if you're not familiar with any of the notes I use in this video, check out the material notes playlist on my channel. Let's move the alpha notes down here to make some room. I wanna add the puddle notes here. Add a set material attributes node. We need 5 elements. Base color, specular, roughness, normal, and displacement. I'll add two constant three vectors and three constants. A default vector 3 for the base color, a constant value of 0.35 for the specular, default specular is 0.5, water is slightly less specular, a constant value of 0 for the roughness, a blue color for the normal, it acts as a flat normal. And finally a constant value of 0.5 for displacement. 0.5 is the default value. Values lower than that create holes and values more than that create bumps. So if we want a smooth surface for the puddle, displacement should be a constant value. And 0.5 is a good starting point. Add a named reroute and name it puddle. Here we should add another blend node. So duplicate this one. Connect the puddle to the B input, the output of the previous blend to the A input and connect it to the main material node. Now let's create the alpha. Down here in the alpha section, duplicate the height layer function and connect the B channel of the vertex color node to its transition phase input. Now we can use the B channel when vertex painting to paint the puddles. Add a parameter, run it through an absolute node and connect it to the contrast input. For height texture 1, I'll use the noise texture from the starter content. It's here, I've added it in the previous video. So let's add its name reroute here, clamp it between 0 0.05 and 1. I don't want it to have very low values. Multiply it by a parameter, name it height multiplier puddle. Set the default value to 1 and connect the multiply node to the height texture 1 input. Now set the group of these new parameters to height. For height texture 2, I'll use the resulting height map from here. Drag out of the alpha output and add a named reroute. I'll name it alpha 3. Up here connect it to the alpha input on the blend node and save the material. Let's go ahead and vertex paint the puddle. Select the mesh in the level and go to the modeling mode. On the left select the attributes section and click on paint vertex colors. Vertex colors are white by default so set the paint color to black and enable only the blue channel. Set the material mode to original material to see the materials in the scene. Adjust the brush size and start painting the puddle. Click on accept and now we can see a very bad looking puddle on the ground. There are a number of things wrong with it. I'm gonna address them one by one. By the end of this part the puddle will turn from this to this. The most important thing is that we're completely losing the ground information under the puddle. Puddles don't work like that. We should add them to the existing material. So first we should get the material under the puddle, then we should blend them together. The material is the one we have blended with the puddle. To get its individual components, we can use the get material attributes node. I want the base color, the roughness, the normal and the displacement. 
connect them like this and add a named reroute for each of the outputs. Now add the named reroutes down here, we want to blend them with the puddle. Let's start with the base color, convert the vector 3 to a parameter and multiply it by the blend base color. Now use this as the puddle base color. Let's set the default color to a low saturated brown. I'll convert the roughness constant to a parameter and multiply it by the blend roughness. Let's save the material and check the result. Now it looks more like a puddle. Next there's the displacement issue. Everything in the puddle area has become flat. It doesn't work like that. The water accumulates in some places. It has a certain depth and the things that are taller than that stick out. It's not happening here. Based on the pattern we see on the ground, some of these stones and rocks should stick out of the water. So let's get back in the material. The default displacement of the puddle is 0.5. So anything with a displacement more than 0.5 should stick out. I'll use the if node to achieve that. Connect the blend displacement to the A input. And set the B value to 0.5. Also connect the blend displacement to the A greater than B input. And connect the 0.5 constant to A less than B. Connect the if node to the displacement input here. Now where the displacement is less than 0.5, it will use the 0.5 constant so it will be flat. And where the displacement is more than 0.5, it will use the blend displacement so it will keep the displacement of the surface below. Save the material to see how it looks. And now we can see some of the stones and debris on the ground are sticking out of the puddle. It's looking more and more realistic. The parts that are sticking out should have different properties than the part that is covered by the puddle. Right now only the displacement is different, so we should use the same if logic for all of these. Duplicate it 4 times, one for each of the inputs. Connect the if nodes to the set material attributes node. And let's start from the top which is the base color. If displacement is greater than 0.5, use the blend base color. And if it's less than 0.5, use the multiplied one. I forgot we should connect the blend displacement to all the if nodes. This is what we're comparing with 0.5. For the specular, if A is greater than B, use the default specular, which is 0.5. And if A is less than B, use the new specular. For the roughness, I'll multiply the blend roughness by 0.7 before connecting it to A greater than B. I want its roughness to change a little bit. Connect this multiplied roughness to A less than B. The blend normal should be connected to here and the flat normal should be connected to A less than B. Save the material to see the result. It's becoming better and better. Next I want to add some more parameters to better control the base color. But before getting to that, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel.
Also join our communities on Telegram, Discord, and Facebook. You can ask questions or answer them, share your work in progress, and more. If you are interested in supporting the channel and downloading the project file for this video, check out my Patreon. The links are in the description. When a porous surface becomes wet, its color becomes more saturated and slightly darker. So here after the blend base color node, I'll add a desaturate node and a multiply node. Connect them like this. Desaturate, well, desaturates colors, but if we use a negative value, it increases the saturation. So I'll use a constant value of minus 0.4 for the fraction and I'll set the B value of the multiply to 0.6 to make it darker. Let's layer between the default blend base color and the darker saturated one. For the alpha, I'll add a parameter and name it surface porousness. Run it through a saturate node before connecting it to the alpha input. Now when this parameter is zero, the surface below the puddle won't change, as it happens with non-porous surfaces such as metals. And if it's set to one, the color of the surface below the puddle changes, as it happens with porous surfaces like natural stone. I'm gonna add two more lerps. The first one I will use to lerp between the color and the result of the multiply node. The default alpha is fine for this one. It blends the puddle color with the surface beneath it and makes it appear muddy. I'll use the other one to lerp between the multiply node and the result of the lerp. Make sure the multiply is connected to the A input. For the alpha, I'll add a scalar parameter, run it through a saturate and connect it like this. It will control the opacity of the puddle. When it's zero, the puddle is see-through, but as I increase it, we'll see more of the color. Select all these nodes and press C to comment them. The B stands for the channel we used to vertex paint it. Let's save the material to check it in the level. And I forgot to set the group for the parameters. So select the parameters and set their group to puddle B. And save again. Open the material instance. Now we have the puddle section down here. I can change the color and the roughness. Increase the opacity to make it look muddy. Or decrease it to make it look clear. Around 0.4 looks good. We can also control the surface porousness. It's better visible when the opacity is set to 0. And finally, we can control the overall height of the puddles with these two height parameters up here. The default value of 0 for height contrast looks good. These black areas are just artifacts because virtual shadow maps don't update as we change the height. If I look away and look again, they go away. Right now the puddle's displacement is set to 0.5 and has a constant depth. It covers the surface beneath it only to a certain degree, even if we increase its height like this. The default 0.5 value looks the best, but what if we want its depth to be more than the height of these stones? Let's go back in the material. In the displacement section, multiply the 0.5 constant by a parameter and name it displacement multiplier. Set its group to puddle and its default value to 1. Saturate the result, add it to a named reroute, and connect it to the B input on all the if nodes. Also connect it to the A less than B input here. Save the material. 
and open the material instance. Now when I increase the parameter, the water level rises and when I decrease it, the water level goes down. It looks good only to a certain degree though. If I keep increasing it, it breaks the effect. That's why I prefer to use the default 0.5 value. It's handy if I want to flood the whole surface. A high height multiplier value like 80 and displacement value can flood the mesh. The material could also be set up with one if not. We would have to use two set material attributes, one for the blend material and one for the puddle. The nodes used are exactly the same as above and the material wouldn't be any cheaper. It's just another way to do it. I just wanted to show it to you. Right now puddles can form on any angle. If I rotate the mesh, we can see that even when it's vertical, the puddle is there. Puddles only form on flat areas. So let's make it so. We can use the vertex normal in workspace node to achieve that. First, mask its B channel. We only need the normals in the Z direction. Then raise it to the power of 128. If I preview the mask node and then preview the power node, we can see that the white color is limited to the flat area on the top. Now if I multiply this by the alpha of the height lerp node, we can limit the puddle to form only on flat areas. Let's multiply it by 1.1 just to make sure all the values reach 1 and then saturate it. Now we should connect it to the alpha 3 named reroot. Save the material. And now as soon as I start rotating the mesh, the puddle disappears. Now let's add ripple to the puddles to mimic the effect of wind. Right now the normal of the puddle is a simple blue color. It's flat. In the starter content textures folder, if I search for water, we see this normal texture. I will use this to add movement to the puddle. So add the texture and make some room in the puddle section. Bring the blue color next to it and connect them to a lerp node. Add a parameter for the alpha and name it wind ripple normal strength. When the parameter is zero, it will use the flat normal. And as I increase it, it will use the normal texture. In this case, I won't use the saturate node because I want to use values less than 0 and more than 1 to change the normal strength. Connect the lerp to a named reroute. Name it puddle normal and connect it to the if node like this. Now we can add the nodes for the normal. I'll add a panel node and connect it to the UV's input. For the speed, I'll append two constant values and connect them like this. Based on the texture, the ripples should move in the V direction. So let's convert the second constant to a parameter and name it wind ripple speed. Set the default value to 0.1. For the coordinate, I'll duplicate my function from up here. This parameter will be wind ripple size. Duplicate it and name it rotation. Set the default value to 0 for this one. Set the group for all the parameters. And save the material. Let's check it in the level. But before that I forgot to set the default normal strength to 1. Save again. We can see some movement on the water, but it doesn't look good. Let's decrease both the size and the speed of the wind ripple to 0.05. Now it looks better. We can also change the rotation. 
and the normal strength. To add more detail and variation to the ripple, I'll duplicate the texture and add it on top of the other texture but with different UV settings. Select the texture, the panner and the function and duplicate them. This one I want to be a smaller and move faster with a different rotation. I'll multiply the wind ripple size by 0.33 and connect it to the size input. Add 75 to the wind ripple rotation and connect it to the rotation input and multiply wind ripple speed by 1.5 I'll use a constant 2, set it to 0 and 1.5 and connect it to the speed input To blend these two normal textures, we should add their R and G channels and multiply their B channels Add an append many node to combine the channels together and connect the RGB output to the LERP. Save the material and go back in the level. Now it looks better. And finally, let's add the weathering effect. It's great for adding extra details on surfaces. To achieve this, I'll change the base color, the specular, and the roughness. And we should add it to the material before blending it with the puddle. So make some room between these blend nodes. Disconnect them for now. And add a get material attributes and the set material attributes in between them. Connect them like this. We should add the weathering effect here. Add three elements on both of them, base color, specular and roughness. Add a named reroute for each of the components here. I'll name this blend too, so I don't confuse them with the named reroutes we used for the puddle. Down here next to the puddle section, this is where I'll add the weathering nodes. So first add the blend named reroutes we created above. Multiply the specular by 0.8 and connect it to a LERP node. Connect the specular to the A input. We'll set up the alpha later. Do the same with the roughness, but this time multiply it by 1.2. I want it to get a little rougher. Most of the change will be on the base color, so drag out of it and add a desaturate node. I'll desaturate it by a fraction of 0.3. Multiply it by constant 3 and convert it to a parameter. This will control the tint of the weathering effect. Let's set the default value to something that is obvious when we add it. We can change it later from the material instance. Add a lerp. Connect the base color to the A input and the multiply to the B input. Let's add three named reroutes. Weathering base color. Weathering Specular and Weathering Roughness. Now let's create the alpha. Duplicate the height lerp and all the nodes connected to it down here. 
change the parameter's name to weathering. We don't need the alpha and the clamp. Connect the B channel of the vertex color node to the transition input. For height 2 texture, I'll invert the resulting height map from here and connect it. I inverted it because the weathering starts from the top, not the bottom like the puddle. Drag out of the alpha output and add a named reroute. This is alpha weathering. Let's use it as the alpha for this lerps. And looks like I've misspelled weathering. Okay. Connect the weathering named reroutes to the set material attributes like this. Now save the material to check it in the level. In the material instance, we can change the weathering height and contrast. As you can see, it starts from the top of the stones and goes all the way to the bottom. The default value of 0 is good for the contrast, but we can increase it to better see where the effect starts and where it ends. Let's set the weathering color group and save the material again. Down here in the weathering section, we can change the color. Let's add another parameter to have more control over the effect. Multiply the alpha by a parameter before connecting it to the named reroute. Name the parameter weathering amount. Set its group to weathering, default value to 1, and let's run it through a saturate before connecting it to the multiply. Save the material. And now we can control the weathering amount. When it's zero, we won't see it. And as I increase it, we see it again. A combination of all these parameters give us a good level of control over the final result. Click here for more Unreal stuff and thank you so much for watching. Like this video, subscribe and join our communities on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. So. See you in the next one.